What's up, everybody? Gary here with the Yellow Iguanas. I'm here with our boy Diego, who is ready for some food. Don't go for my toes, little boot hole. Um, yeah, so today we're talking about Cyclor. We're talking full in-depth care on all of them. You know, the, the Lewis size, rhinos, Cubans, whatever Cyclor species you may have. Today we are going uh, in-depth on the care sheet, basically, for, uh, for all these guys. Say hi, Diego. What's up? There we go. All right, join us along the ride. Alrighty, so we are actually now upstairs. We're gonna take you through kind of from hatchling, small, you know, little baby juveniles. Uh, start with the care from there and work our way up. So we're actually in one of our rooms upstairs where we have a couple of our grow outs. First of which is this little girl right here. Uh, so sorry for the, the glass. <laughs> Uh, but this is our girl, Lucy. I'm gonna see if we can move the top without her freaking out here. Uh, Lucy is a yearling. We've actually had her now for about a year. We got her um, from our pal, Jacob Crawford, actually in December of 2020. This girl is, she is just gorgeous. She's actually gonna be incredibly high blue. Um, her bloodlines really are actually some of the best you can actually get. Um, but she's awesome, of course, skittish. We don't force handle anything with them. Uh, we just kind of let them do their own thing. So we actually have her in this uh, in this 40 gallon breeder tank. Um, for babies into, I mean, honestly, even yearlings, you can kind of use your best judgment. But she does really well in this tank. We've got plenty of places where she can kind of climb up to perch. She's got hide spots on the cold, cold side over there. She's got hide spot here on the warm side. Got some fake vines that she can kind of go all within. I really hate this tank. It does not look good for this. <laughs> uh, but yeah, but she does really well in here. So typically with, with all of our, uh, oh gosh, now I'm taking things off the stand and I don't know what's happening. Uh, so with all of our young ones, really a, a 40 gallon breeder. Yeah, so with all of our, our young iguanas, um, like a 40 gallon breeder um, works great. I'm actually... I like using the uh, like the Exoterra, like the ones with the flip open doors. They just tend to work a little bit better because that way you're not coming in from the top of them, which they don't like. But a uh, 40 gallon breeder works really, really well. So for UVB, UVB is obviously an incredibly, incredibly, incredibly important thing. Um, you're gonna see so many different conflicting views on which UVB, whether the Reptisuns, Arcadias, the compact fluorescent coils, Mercury vapor lights, the fluorescent tubes. You're gonna see a whole bunch of stuff on there. Um, the fluorescent tubes, usually if you get the right ones, they're great. The compact fluorescents aren't very good. They just typically don't penetrate very well. Um, now, I use mercury vapor lights. I use the Reptile UV Mega Ray bulbs. Um, I have them in all of our guana cages, our bearded dragon cages, a water monitor, the skink, anything that needs UVB. I use those mega rays. Um, so for a smaller enclosure like this, I've got a 100 watt mega ray right here. It produces a fair amount of heat, but the UVB that it produces is just, you can't beat it. Um, even after you know well over a year, these things still produce UVB and all of our animals do super well with them. Uh, most of the cages I'll have a second, um, some sort of a second heat source. Typically I do use a halogen light, that way it's some extra light. Um, and they produce a good amount of heat. This particular setup, I just have a ceramic heat emitter on here. Um, she's getting ready to get upgraded as well as our girl Tiffany, who is hiding in here. We'll talk about this cage here in just a second. But th these guys are both getting ready to get moved downstairs into something a little bit bigger, more climbing space, more room for them to really grow. Um, but it allows them to still have their UVB and their heat. Um, another real important thing, basking temperatures you're gonna see a lot of conflicting information. Uh, when you look online, a lot of stuff is just, there is good stuff there. Whoa, whoa, a little dirty, let me get you cleaned up here. Plenty of good information online, but there's also a lot of not good information online. Um, so I mean, of course, every, everyone starts somewhere. I started that way as well as reading online. Found some really good Facebook groups. Um, and thankfully, I've just been able to talk to some really, really great people um, within the community. A lot of the OGs of the Cyclora world. So, um, you know, Manny Hernandez, Renata Carlson, Tom Crutchfield, Sam Pascucci, Pat Brown. Um, you know, I mean, just to name 
a few of the people I've, I've been able to, to talk with in depth and get a lot of really good information. Um, you know, Jacob Crawford's another one You're, that uh, that has a lot of really good info. Um, so basking temperatures for these guys. I like rambling a little bit. Really on the minimum side, yeah, you know, maybe 110, 115, something like that. But I like higher. Um, I try to get at least 125, 130 um, in all of my cages. There's actually been reports of... Uh, down to the Grand Cayman Islands, they're just Lewis-sized down there basking in the middle of the street where people have tempted it, and it's over 150 degrees. So, of course, you got to be careful. you got to make sure you're not overheating the enclosure. Um, and, of course, you know, you don't want 180, 190 degrees, anything crazy like that. But I like giving, I like making sure that there is a nice hot spot in there, and then they can move out of it if they so choose. It's easier to show in a bigger cage. Um, on her cage here, you know, she's a little bit over 100 degrees where she's at on that log, and that is the hottest spot, just to show that that temperature does perfectly fine. But that, when you can get that temp up a little bit higher, they, they just do really well. Um, they seem to really, really enjoy those higher temperatures. Um, so that's something that's very, very important to have with these guys. They need to metabolize. Um, when they're hot, they're typically going to color up a lot better as well. Um, so yeah, keep them hot, feed them a lot. You'll hear a lot of that stuff like with uh, with monitors. Um, honestly, a lot of really similar things with the Cyclora. Um, you can see her body definition is perfect. You know, I don't I don't overfeed any of our animals. Um, typically, we feed them three to four times a week, even as like the babies. Gosh, this is so difficult. Hey, Lucy. Where she goes? Here she is. Um, so yeah, so we, we feed a good good amount, but typically we're, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, um, and sometimes like on the weekend if we have extras. But I mean, you can just see on her. I mean, you see she's got a nice fat tail. Her belly's good. Today's actually feeding day. So if anything, her belly's just gonna be a little bit empty. You can see she's growing. You can see where she's shedding down there on her leg. You know, we feed them, we try to, I, I go for the, the slow and slow method. I don't like barbecue. I'm not trying to get them huge in a year or two. Uh, I like keeping everything nice and healthy and natural for them. Oh, I can't wait for this girl to color up. She's awesome. All right, let's move on to uh, the next animal. We can kind of keep talking. All righty, so we're hanging out with our girl, Tammy. I just, uh, I got her out here now. So if you remember back from uh, the Thanksgiving video, the feeding video, Tam Tam got a little, uh, didn't show it, but I talked about how we found her with a little cut on her. So, we have had her kind of quarantined by herself while we got that to heal, which you can kind of see. It's, it's healing up really, really nice. That's all just a bunch of dry, dead skin. But she's doing really, really good right now. We just have her in this little grow tent. Um, grow tents are just, they're just cheap, really easy enclosure setups. Not the prettiest thing in the world, but it's a good size and it works. So she's just hanging out with me up, uh, out here right now. You can get right to me. So in this cage right here, we have Tiffany. I can't keep track of uh, of all of these names here. I got her from our buddy uh, Ion at North Georgia Exotics. Um, can't really see her anywhere in there. So I'm not quite sure on the bloodline. We think that she's got some pretty, pretty strong ones, but we just don't know. She's in a 20 gallon long. It's a little bit smaller than what I would typically like. Um, when we got her at the time, I didn't have any open 40s, but she's small. She's smaller than what Lucy over here is. Oh, right there. So she's okay. I'm getting ready to upgrade both of them into something bigger. Just got to redo the tortoise room to open up some space. But she's another one of our uh, Cyclera Lewis size. Don't have any boyfriends for her yet, but of course being Tiffany, we need a Chucky. Chucky, Tiffany. Huh? We try to keep all the, the name pairings like that together. And then we just have some isopods in there. But anyway, so now that we have a, a beautiful rhino iguana here, we can kind of talk with them. So they're all the Cyclora species, they're gonna have pretty much the same care needs. Whether it's the Lewis Eye, which are the Grand Cayman Blue Rock Iguanas, whether it's a Cuban Rock Iguana, Rhinoceros Iguana, um, if you're lucky enough to have one of the other species, like the, the Rickords or Records, however you want to pronounce it, Figanisi, Figanisi, Figanasi, I don't know. Can't speak Latin, but whatever Cyclora species that you might be lucky enough to have outside of the you know the main three, their care is all going to be the same. Um, they all like that nice hot heat. Um, cage requirements are all going to be the same. 
Some seem to be more social than others. But again, that's, you'll note the rhinos tend to be a little bit more uh, more sociable, I've noticed, than the Lewis size. Not saying that the Lewis size are not sociable, but the rhinos definitely tend to be a little bit more communal um, than anything else. Um, but yeah, got a little off track. So we talked about temperatures. We talked about UVB. So again, definitely need to have good UVB for these guys. These aren't like a, a tropical animal that's gonna live in the forest, not need super strong UVB. These guys need strong UVB. Same thing in here, um, her heat lights actually out of here before it's that bulb. Um, you can see that mega ray back there though is given all the UVB she needs. Girl, are you licking my toes? Damn, yeah, you're a fun girl. But she's just the sweetest thing. So humidity wise, um, you know, they're, they're a typical, they're a moderate animal, you know, they're not, they're not quite from a lush rainforest, but they're also not from a desert. Uh, typically room humidity is perfectly fine. Um, you know, all of ours, regardless of where in the house they are, typically they're between 40 and 50%. Um, and that's... You know, that's a little bit low. I would, I would love to see it be between 50 and 60, but being between 40 and 50, they work just fine. Um, the ones that I've had here the longest never have had shedding issues or, or anything of the sort. Um, so just keep your normal room humidity. Um, of course, if you have any water features in your enclosure, that's just going to help to add humidity as well. But yeah, pretty simple. So keep them hot, normal, just room humidity. You know, if you wanted to mist them down every day or a couple of times a week, they're they're not gonna not like it. You know, they're they're gonna enjoy it. Um, rhinos actually come from a drier environment than some of the other ones do. Um, when you see online a lot of the folks that have actually been to their natural habitat, it is a little bit of a more rocky, sandy, gravelly, arid type environment. Um, so I think they probably enjoy the the lower humidities a little bit more than let's say the you know the Lewis size or the Cubans that might come from something that's a little bit more lush. But again though, I, I treat all of them exactly the same. Never have any issues whatsoever um, with any of their care. Hey Timmy girl. She is just a sweetheart. So Tammy came from our friends over at Starborn Rock Piles, along with Ron, her boyfriend. So if you watch Parks and Rec, this is Tammy 2. Uh, it's because Tammy 1. Who likes Tammy 1? Um, came from our good friends at Starborn. They actually, uh, when they sent her to me, she was just a nightmare for them. They just weren't sure that she was ever going to tame down. And, uh, and Julie Morningstar, the, the head honcho over there at Starborn, She's great at taming down these rhinos. Um, and just Tammy's, for whatever reason, they had issues with. When they sent her to me, um, you know, they knew that she was going into a nice big cage downstairs. And honestly, within just a few weeks of working with her, I mean, she just turned into be this, this, this absolute sweetheart. Here, baby, come here. Come to daddy. Yeah, she normally when, uh, when she's heated up and you go walk into the cage, she'll just come right on over to hang out. Apparently today, who knows what she's trying to do, but you can kind of see, you can kind of see that wound area a little bit better. I uh, treated it with a uh, betadine, um, a neosporin type cleaner, no painkillers in it. And then I like a, li a spray liquid bandage just to kind of help keep it clean. And it worked out pretty well. But yeah, you can see uh, our Tammy girl. She laid in fertiles for us this year, which that was her first year. Uh, laying any eggs. So we're very hopeful that we'll have some uh, some Ron and Tammy babies here in you know, later 2022. That would be awesome. If you're possibly interested, um, you know, shoot me a message on Instagram, Facebook. Um, if you want to be put on, kind of have your name on a list, I'm, I'm really looking forward to 2022. We should hopefully have some babies from them. Maybe Bindi and Sully, um, our other pair of rhinos, but I think Bindi might still be a year too young. And then we're also hoping to have some Lewis eye babies, but we'll, when we go back downstairs, we'll look at them. But let me know if you're interested in possibly being put on a list for, uh, for rhino babies. Yeah, our sweet Tammy girl. All right, so now we're downstairs into the basement into the next iteration of 
iguana. It's kind of the next the next part of their lifespan. You know, once they get past that, you know, that young baby stage or the small yearling stage, and you start getting them more sub-adult stages. So this is what I've got them uh, kept in. So you saw the video where we built up those catios. So we've got two of them down here. Of course, we have Freddie and Sky. This is the Lewis Eye pair that we are that we are hoping to have babies from. Uh, girl Sky laid her in fertile eggs for the first time this past year as well. So she is physically ready um, to do it. She is a 2018. Freddie is a 2017. So they're they are of age. Sky is still. Like we talked about, she's still a little jumpy. Oh, let's try and get close to show how pretty you are, you Freddy boy. So once they outgrow, like something like a 40 gallon breeder tank, um, you know, then at that point you can move them into something a little bit bigger. Um, some folks will put smaller animals into their lifetime habitat, their big one. And you can do it. You just gotta make sure that it's built correctly. You have plenty of hides. They gotta feel really secure if they're gonna just be in this big open space. Hey, Freddie, do you wanna come say hi? So typically I kinda like doing a uh, an intermediate one. I'm sorry, I'm trying to film a video here. These are the lesser Antillian iguanas that, uh, as you can clearly tell, we need to work with them a little bit more. Freaking psychopaths. But anyway, so yeah, so having them in something like this, you know, I kind of, th since thankfully I have the, the ability to give them that intermediate size cage, this works really well and they'll be able to stay in here for a while. Hey, Fred. Yeah, it's feeding the, oh, that's an old green. Yeah, so same thing, I mean, even in a cage like this. So typically, you know, Cyclora aren't a arboreal lizard. As babies, they do a lot more climbing because uh, they're it's more secure for them. As they age, they typically really don't do a lot of climbing. So with something like this, having this kind of height, these guys aren't full grown. Uh, and this, this is a good way that I can utilize the space that I have for them. Even though they like knocking the branches over. Freddy, what are you doing? He's a good boy. Yeah, but in here though, same deal. So I've got the Mega Rays, except in these cages, I have the 160 watt Mega Rays. Obviously they're significantly more powerful than the 100 watt. Oh look, another basking lights out, go figure. So I got two Mega Rays in here, along with all the spaces that they need that they can climb and they can have a lot of fun. Um, if you're gonna do an intermediate cage, you know, you're, you're looking at custom. You're, you're not finding a fish tank that's not gonna work. Fish tanks aren't good anyway. Um, you're gonna want at least, I mean, at, at Freddy's size here, where he's he's probably about two and a half foot or so. Um, I mean, you're gonna want at least a six foot by a three foot cage for one animal. If you're pairing them up, so like with me with him and Sky Girl up there, both of them could not fit into a six by three comfortably. Um, I would probably need a minimum of an eight foot by four foot for, for the two of them at this size. And so this isn't even close to being full grown. As full grown, you know, you're gonna want it, realistically, at least a 10 foot by 10 foot. I don't recommend these animals being kept in, you know, you'll see some stuff, oh, an eight by four, an eight by six is sufficient for one adult. No, that's a load of horse, uh, horse manure. Because these guys are very active animals. They use every single inch, even of this enclosure. Um, Diego's in a 12 foot by nine foot cage and if I had the ability right now, I'd go even bigger. Eventually when we get a bigger property, I want to do, you know, like 20 by 10s for everybody. Hey Fred. And you can see, so once these animals lose their fear of you, it's, they're very curious, inquisitive animals. Um, you know, Sky up there, she's watching. She, she wants to come down, but she's just still, she still needs a little bit more, more time. Um, Freddy last year, we really focused with him a lot. And he's, you know, I'd say he's about 85% there. Um, still need to have little bits that he needs to gain some confidence with. But we don't force anything. We let them come to us. We might bribe them with blueberries. But you can see, obviously, it works pretty well. Because he, he's coming right over and has no, shows no fear. I think they're all also waiting for food because got another little girl over there. So that's actually another good, uh, good little segue. So this is a four foot by two foot by four foot Zen habitat. Sir, are you trying to eat my sandal? 
There's nothing on my shoe. You poop face. So this is a four by two by four. This is a really good size for uh, for some of the smaller iguanas. Uh, Peter here, she is two years old. Um, and this 424, which she just loves knocking stuff over, it works really well. You could put a, you know, baby into something like this, again, if you had enough hide for them so that they felt comfortable. Um, but this 4x2x4 four by by four is, that's another good intermediate for a smaller animal. So something that's Peter's size, she, she doesn't have to be in any massive cage yet. She does very well in that. There's still plenty of room for her to move around. This other cage over here, I don't want to open it because uh, one of the locks down there, it's a little bit of a pain in the butt. I got to get it fixed. Um, so we got Gabby and baby G. May, I I'm not banking on babies from them this year. Baby G's of age, he is, gosh, he's two years old too. Males at about uh, two years old, typically. Yeah, they can breed. Females, that's, that's definitely young. You want them to at least lay their first clutch of infertiles before you start worrying about breeding. But just again, they've got tons of space in here for them to run around, do what they want to do, and this will easily last them another couple years. Um, and then once they outgrow this, they're going to go into their big boy cage, which for an adult pair, you know, ideally, you know, it's again, 10 by 10, that's going to be your absolute minimum. And even then, you're you're kind of pushing it a little bit. Um, you know, see me walk through the basement here, because then see like Diego is a 12 foot by 9 foot pen. You know, it's it's big, and it looks like it's huge for him, but he utilizes every inch of it. Oh, boy. hey, don't chase after my toes. Yeah, don't be a little butthole. Yeah, he knows he's a butthole. He likes chasing after my toes. Yeah, so we talked about temperatures. Um, you know, again, basking spot 120 plus. Oh, he's gonna jump after my phone. Just regular humidity. Um, feeding, which we kind of touched on. So, so we feed, oh, that is the most satisfying thing in the world right there, pulling his, uh, when they're ready to come off. So we feed three times a week, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And then sometimes we will um, feed an extra day, just kind of depending on how everything is going. Um, Greens is going to be the biggest thing that you need to feed them. Dark leafy greens, collard, mustard, turnip, um, endive, escarole. You can mix in different cilantro, stuff like that. Um, my recommendation is Google green iguana diet. There's a couple good websites that really list all of the, the really good greens. I give him a good bit. So he's got this big old planter dish or saucer dish. And I basically just fill that up. And it says he does really well. He's He's got a nice little belly nice thick tail so he's he's lean he's muscular he's not overweight um you know so we do that for all of them we do mainly greens i used to do a lot more veggies um but in all honesty we haven't really done them in in quite a while um i kind of just just kind of my own thinking on it of they're grazers you know they're eating grasses weeds greens stuff like that in nature there's not really necessarily veggies that are out there that they're eating. And again, I could be completely wrong on all this, but so we've been doing no shirts. Sure, I'm going after my toes. So we've been doing primarily just <laughs> the greens. Um, and it's been working out very well. Of course, we make sure that they're, they get a variety of the greens, mixing some Missouri every now and again. I gotta be careful of you so you don't bite my toes. Yeah, three, four times a week, just with good portions when you feed them. Good way to do low and slow with them. You know, you can feed them every day. You can feed them five, six days a week. And there's not absolutely nothing wrong with that. You know, so they're they're going to eat when they find food. I just, again, my philosophy is just more, a little bit more low and slow, just to help keep them, help keep them nice and healthy. But yeah, look at the eagle. All right, we're going to visit the other rhinos. Um, something else to go along with the diet that I forgot to mention is dusting with like calcium and vitamin stuff like that. Um, you know, calcium three, you know, two, three times a week, vitamins a couple times a week. That stuff all works really well. Um, calcium you want with no D3 because they're getting all that UVB ray um, and they're getting all their vitamin D3 from that. You don't want to oversaturate them. But so this is a pretty big enclosure here. So this one is all in all, so it's 12 feet long 
from end to end, eight feet deep, and then this little corner thing, this comes out about four foot here. So, but it's still tons and tons and tons of space. Uh, we got a little bindy over there, just kind of hiding in the corner. Got Ron, and we got Sully. So we actually have multiple, you know, pairs of iguanas. Tammy's normally in here too. Just waiting on her to heal up. But, uh, so what was happening is first we had Ron and Tammy in this cage, and then I had Bindi and Sully in another cage. Bindi and Sully kept finding ways to escape, and they would work their way into this cage. And I'm always sitting here finding, uh, I would find Ron and Sully cuddled up together. Hey, Ron. So eventually, I, I, we just got sick of every day trying to find animals <laughs> because they were always out and about in the basement. So we just kind of kept them together. And, you know, the two males, they have their they have their little bouts every now and again. Um, but this cage is big enough and we have enough visual barriers that it's not a terribly huge deal. I do plan on moving Ron and Tammy back into a, a different enclosure <laughs> once I get it escape proof, especially come breeding season. I just don't want to risk anything. But this is Ron, so of course we saw Tammy earlier. This is her boyfriend, Ronald, who is one of our absolute favorites. He's amazing. And then our silly boy over there, who is just absolutely sweet as can be. Um, they're both just really awesome, fun lizards. But Ron, and you can see, when we first got him, same thing, he was, he was feisty. You know, he was a couple years old, but he was not very people-friendly. Oh God, what are you doing, dude? <laughs> I don't even think he knows what he's doing half the time um, but being in a nice big walk-in enclosure like this it, it helps a lot they feel a lot more comfortable um, when you can just come in sit here I would literally sit in the spot right there I'd bring blueberries I'd bring my iPad down I'd watch a show and I would just kind of put blueberries around me on my legs and force him to come up to me and again within just a few weeks I mean he just complete 180 and he just turned into just a super sweet animal never force handled never never did anything that would be a negative experience for him what are you doing dude yeah so he's awesome and then our bindi girl she used to be really really awesome then with some of her she would escape the most and we would have to go and, and grab her so many times she just really started not liking us Bender, you see she looks, her and Ron both, if you look, I mean, they look like they're in rough shape with the way that their colors and everything look. It's just them shedding their skin. Um, she's actually a little bit cold down there. She's not in the hot, the heat. So that can make their colors look a little wonky too. But you can see he's just, he's just shedding. So that's kind of why he looks like poo poo. The rhinos are, rhinos are a lot of fun. Um, you know, we're, we're really looking forward to some Ron and Tammy babies. Anytime we have people over to the house, of course, Diego is always a big hit. But other than Diego, I mean, Ron, Ron is most people's favorites. Because you just sit here and look at that. You really can't get much more majestic than that. Oh, yeah, all that skins. Never peel off skin that's not ready to come off. That is just clearly very, very loose and ready to just get picked. Yeah, good boy, Ron. Right, we'll come say hello to Sully real quick. Hey, Sully boy. So you can see, really see on Sully why they're called rhino iguanas. Look at all those horns he's got. Yeah. Thanks for that angle, buddy. <laughs> but Sully is just gorgeous. I don't know. The camera co actually does pick it up pretty well. You can see just, he's got all of these blues that are just coming through after a fresh shed, which is just unreal. He is just a gorgeous, gorgeous boy. Yeah, him and Ron have been getting into it a little bit. Look, so I'm not to really separate them. All just these little, kind of, these little tiny little marks everywhere. Thankfully, it doesn't look like anything where skin's been broken, you know, because they're, they're pretty good about refereeing themselves. But yeah, we don't want to risk anything happening. video here so yeah we talked about temperatures humidities talked about their diet we talked about enclosures talked a little bit about taming them down if you have any other questions 
you know, that I can help to answer about any of these animals, please feel free to drop down in the comments and I'll answer everyone to the best of my knowledge. And yeah, you know, we covered, yeah, really we covered all the, all the main stuff. Um, yeah, this is how I do it just from what my opinion on things are and how I just gathered all my information and kind of combined all that information together. So that's how I do it. It works really well for me, but of course everyone's going to be a little bit different. But as always, thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I know this one's been uh, a little bit long-winded, but I love my Cyclor. I've got a lot to say about them. Um, so yeah, I mean, please share this with anybody that's thinking about owning a Cyclora. If you know somebody who has a Cyclora and they just need a, a refresher, or if you think they just need more information, please, please share this. I really want these animals to be more in the limelight. Uh, they're just so amazing. There's no reason why they shouldn't be a much more common household pet in the reptile world. Um, much better than green iguanas. Um, they just take up space, but they're just so amazing to have. So hopefully showing how simple it is to care for these guys, hopefully that'll bring a little bit more light into them. And again, if you're in, if anyone's interested in, uh, and getting a Ron and Tammy baby or a Freddie and Sky baby. I know we're very premature, but just if you wanted to put your name on a list just to make sure that you actually get one, please hit me up, uh, leave me a message, and I'll get back with y'all. Um, yeah, again, thank you so much for watching. Uh, enjoy my rambles, and uh, talk to y'all next time.